Praise God. I'm here, I want to share with you this morning something that I feel is extremely important in our lives as individuals, as Christians, as we walk with God, and it's this, don't ever let your God-given dream, don't, don't let it go. Always hang on to your God-given dream, because there is an enemy who will try to steal that dream from you, will try to take that dream from you, will try to confuse you or, or cause you to, to think that that dream is not a dream. That dream is not something that God has given you. Joel, the second chapter, verse 28 says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. I'm looking forward to that day. I desire to see that day when God's Spirit is poured out on, man, on the flesh of men, when God starts to move, because I believe it's going to happen. And I'm praying that it'll be in my lifetime. If it's not in my lifetime, I pray that I can look down from heaven and cheer on the ones that are down there. Because this world is in great need today of God. And it's in great need for the church to rise up. And it's great need for those that proclaim Christianity to get something stirring in their heart and not let their dream die. You see, God's given us all a dream. Every one of you, God's given you a dream. You may not recognize that dream yet. You may not recognize it as a God-given dream, but he's given you a dream. And, and the enemy will try to steal it in so many ways. I have a dream. I just read my dream right there. Part of it. It says, and, I sh and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. I pray someday that I can see our sons and our daughters prophesying, uh, crying out to a world, taking that place, stepping in the, in the gap to where God can use them to reach out to a lost and dying world and won't be pulled in by the world. They won't be pulled down by the world, but be, will be lifted up. And the power of God will work in their hearts. And the Spirit of God will be within them. That when people get around them, they'll know that God is alive. God is not dead. That dream is to see God pour out His Spirit. It says, old men shall dream dreams. Young men shall see visions. I'm praying. I'm a dreamer. I have dreams. You have dreams? You have dreams? I'm praying that, that there will be some young men that will get a vision. That will get a vision and will start seeing things and they will start having dreams. And it will desire to see those dreams fulfilled. I dream of seeing a church really be the church that God has called it to. Filled with the Spirit of God. You know, when that happens, there will be change that will take place. There will be notable change. There will be change in our actions. There will be ch the changes in what we say, It'll ch what we do, how we act, how we talk to one another. The Spirit that's on us will be the Spirit of God. Ephesians 5.27 says that he might present to himself the church in all of her glory. As a young boy... I would sit in the pews and I would hear people argue. I would hear people fuss. I, I was a part of a church split as a young boy and it broke my heart. I couldn't understand it. It was this person against this. Or, or this and it's still happening today in churches all, all around us. Disagreements and arguments. What do you think the enemy's trying to do? He's trying to destroy the church. He's trying to hinder what God is trying to do right today. Our world needs the church to rise up. that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot, not a spot, or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. I dream of seeing God's children broken before God. You know what we need more than anything, I believe, is to be broken. 
broken to the place that we realize who God really is and who we really are. We're at His mercy. We don't have anything without God. He is our life. He's the one that has given us breath. He's the reason we exist. He is our foundation. He is our hope. He is our stay. He's really, when we look at it, all that we have. Without Him, we are nothing. I dream of seeing a people who desire and have a quest. Their quest is to do the will of God. Not my will. That's what Jesus said in the garden. He said, not my will. Jesus, the Son of God, He says, not my will, but thine be done. See, He said, if it be thy will, uh, this cup pass from me. Would it? He wanted what the Father wanted. A church, a body of Christ that will deny themselves and what they want, what they desire, uh, what, what they're looking for, and let God have his way. Let God move. No more murmuring and complaining. No more judging and criticizing. No more backbiting. No more lying. No more manipulating to get our own way. I see that. You say, well, our church here in that way, I, I, in so many ways I agree with that. But it's out there. And we're going to have to let our light shine. We're going to have to be like Jesus. We're going to have to be extreme. You know what, is, you know what God expects? He expects the extreme. He expects our most. He expects all of our life. He expects all of our heart. Have you given him all like the song says? Have you opened up and surrendered it all? People who are hungry and thirsting after righteousness, after being in right standing with God, hungry and thirsting. People who, 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 who stand back to back. Oh, they might be different. They might not see things the same way, but, but, but they have the same enemy. And they'll stand back to back and they'll fight for each other no matter what, what, what might happen. No matter how the devil will come, they'll get, get out and pray. Sure, they may have had some disagreements, but when, those, when the time comes, that person's in need. We forget all about that, and we get down, and, and, and we stick together. And we're the army of God, and we fight together. A people who are encouragers and not discouragers. Are you an encourager this morning? We need to all ask ourselves that. I, I want you to know, I'm not mad at y'all. I, I, I think sometimes when we get loud or when we get stirred up inside, people think, well, he's mad at us. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the devil. I'm sick and tired of seeing what he does to so many families, children. I'm tired of I want to see God do something, and a lot depends upon us. It does, each one of us. I want to see people who weep for the lost are more concerned about the lost than they are food on the table for themselves. That see where people are, that feel where people are that's lost, that hurt in their heart, that's, that stay up at night and think about it and pray for them. Instead of worrying about who won the game or who lost the game, people who are willing to really trust God and try not to take things in their own hands. People who have so much love for Jesus in their hearts and lives that the world is drawn in. We have a loving church. But you know what? We need more of Jesus. We need to, we need to step up higher than we are. We need to get out of our contentedness what happens? This is the way it works. Oh, we'll rise up. We'll say, praise God, we're growing. We're, 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 God's working, do, doing this. And then we'll rise up. And then we'll, we just sort of freeze out a little bit. And then we'll rise up again. And sometimes we, a church gets in a certain place, and it, it just gets stale. And they're just happy because it's the way it is. We have churches today that are dying because they're content. We have churches that have dwindled down because they're just content to stay exactly where they are.
Do you have a dream? Joseph had a dream. Joseph had a I love Joseph. Genesis 37, 5 says, and Joseph dreamed a dream. Joseph dreamed a dream. This morning, I want to say to you, dream a dream. Dream a dream. Everyone needs a dream. Everyone, I really believe, has a dream. They, we just don't know what that dream is. I asked several people this week, I went up to them and I said, well, what's, what's your dream? It's like they, at first they didn't, well, what do you mean, what's my dream? I went up to one individual to, that didn't even attend this, doesn't come to this church. And I says, what's your dream? And it's just like, they just sort of lit up. I thought, well, I've never seen this on this person like this. What's my dream? Well, my dream was I wanted to be a model. I thought, wow, wow, that's pretty good. I said, do you feel like you have fulfilled that dream? No. Well, what happened? Well, me and this girl, we did, went to modeling school together. And, and, and we, we were best friends, and, and we would exchange clothes and do different things. And she would wear my clothes, I'd wear my, her clothes, and we'd critique each other. And we, we were doing so good. And then one day, she took my purse and didn't give it back. And because of that, I got in a place. As a matter of fact, when we were in school, we were in, went to school, we got into it. And we got in trouble at school said from that time on you know it's interesting the dreams that god has given us the little things that we let trip it up the little things that we let let the a god-given dream we're not just talking about a dream now we're talking about a god-given dream i want to tell you something if god gives you something whoa it's better than gold it's better than silver it is actually life life what's more valuable than life and i'm not talking about life here i'm talking about eternal life forever and ever and ever what do you have that you can take with you that you have forever and ever 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 and on i can't say enough and then we sell things out forever we give up everything forever. Everything. Forever. You're right. Why do you think he gave it to you? It's his dream too. You see, it's a God-given dream. He had it and he gave it to you. And that's your purpose in life. What if everybody here fulfilled their God-given dream? What do you think this place would be? Where do you think we'd be? How do you think God, not us, how do you think God would use us? How, some of the things, that, that messes that we get in, we wouldn't be there. Some of the places we get in, some of, some of our depression we get in, we wouldn't even be there. You know why? Because we'd be praising God. We'd be rejoicing. We'd be shouting because of what God's doing, because of the Holy Spirit coming around and giving us the strength and the power. Some of the things we think about, some of the things we dwell on, some of the things that we get so tied up with, those things that just fall to the side. One person said, I wanted to be a, a band director, a CPA. I wanted to be a part of this derby, a part of a spiritual awakening in Shreveport, Bossier. That rung a bell with me because that's where I'm at. I want to see a spiritual awakening. I want to see the real thing. I want to see, I want to see the power of God manifested. I want to see God move and work. People and kids over here get saved in, in, in Turner and, and over here in Huntington and, and people in our community coming and walking down the streets, coming through the doors and, and coming in and sitting down on the pews. 
that are lost, that are lost, lost, going to hell. And we lay in front of our TVs. And we sit behind the table and we eat our food. And we have kids that come in here. And one of the first things they do, they come in my office and they ask, Pastor Joyce, do you have something to eat? Two God's disciples said, silver and gold I have done. But what I have, I'll give to you. Can we be that way? Not, we can't, may not be able to give people a lot of silver and a lot of gold, but there's something that ought to be still, something in our heart that we can open up our heart and give to them. Another one said, when they were seven years old, they wanted to be a truck driver. I asked him, I said, well, did that ever happen? Yes. Ten years later, someone came up to him and asked him, would you like to drive a truck? This person was only 17, I believe, and didn't have a, a CDL. And they said, yes. And they drove a truck. They went out and drove. Then they said, uh, I would like to sing bass with the Happy Goodmans. We're all, I asked some of the, let me read one more. Uh, one said, I'd like to touch the heart of youth and make a difference in their life. My question was, did, did all your dreams come true? I asked a couple of them this. Did, did all your dreams come true? Well, no, some of them did and some of them di didn't. What about your God-given dream? You ever thought about it? Do you even know what your God-given dream is? Have you ever thought about that God has given you a dream? He's put something in your heart. Place something there. One thing that they told me was that they, they didn't, all their dreams get, didn't come true, but the ones that were God-given dreams, that what they received from that would exceeded anything in, in their imagination. They, they can't believe it. In other words, the, the, they might wanted to, to, to sing in, in, in a quartet, a good ones, with the good ones. Today, they're leading us in worship. Exceeded what they could imagine. Don said, you, I, 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 he was the one, he's the one that drove the truck. I'll, I'll ID him for you. He's the one that drove the truck. He's, he's the one that, that uh, wanted to be a bass singer with the Goodwins. Not just with the Goodwins, he's here at Oakmont leading worship. He's here singing. Not only that, guess what? I don't know how many times I, I heard him say, he says, I'm a blessed man. I'm a blessed man because I have my family here. And this one and that one and this one and that one are here. And they're doing this and they're doing this and they're doing that. You see, it exceeds anything that we can imagine, God's dream. We imagine certain things that he shows us in part. But when God opens it up, and that's not all of it in our lives. Some of the things you're to dream, you'll not be able to see what that dream did until you get to heaven. Because you'll start talking to some of those dreams. I say, well, I know you. I know you. I saw you in such and such place, and we t I talked to you about Jesus. I know that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here, you see. You know, maybe some here this morning, your dream this morning is a little different. Maybe your dream is that your lost son or your lost daughter would find Jesus or your lost brother. Maybe that's your dream. Or maybe your dream is that, 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 that your life can change. Or, or maybe your dream is that, that, that uh, your children can have something better than you had. 
that, that your children won't have to go through some of the things that you've gone through, that they'll be blessed beyond. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. In the NIV, instead of vision, the word is revelation. Revelation. That word revelation basically means seize with their heart. Seize with their heart. Your dream can be a revelation of God's calling or His will for you in your life. Your dream. Your dream could be, could be exactly who you are and who God wants you to be. Your dream. And you don't even know it. And you don't even know it. But if we would play it out, and if we would follow it, and do what we know to do, there would be a point that we would recognize it. Uh, I was a young boy. I was a young boy. My mom and dad would take me to church all the time. If, if, and you've heard me tell it. If I, if I couldn't, if I couldn't, if, if they couldn't take me, if my mom couldn't take me to church, and a lot of times she couldn't, she'd pay 50 cents for a taxi for, for make sure me and my brother were at church. Or, or there would be someone in the church that would come pick us up and take us because of my dad being sick. Always wanted us to make sure we was at church. There were Sunday school teachers who would tell us about the love of God and those things would get in our heart. We, I, I, I would climb up my dad. We, I'd, I'd have devotion with him. I, I'd watch him and reading his Bible. I used to listen to him as he read his Bible out real slow because of his sickness. Sometimes he couldn't even say the words correct. And I would sit there and watch him and see his face and see tears run down his face. And I know something was working in his heart. Something was, was happening in his heart. And I felt that. I felt it happening. And there was something I wanted to experience that. Because it was, I knew it was more, even as a young boy, it was more than I had experienced or knew. He got to where he couldn't read. He would, he, there's a, a Bible that he had that he would shake like that, and he finally could read pages were torn. And I would, I, I would climb up in his lap, and I would start reading to him as a very young boy. I started feeling things inside that I didn't understand. I look across the street and my neighbor lady who I'd become friends with, Miss Obie, you've heard me talk about her. She cursed. She drank. She would throw rocks at kids that would ride their bicycle through her yard. She was the noted piece. She would drive down the street. Clara Bell Obie was her name. She'd drive down the street in her old Plymouth, that the metal was so thick you, you couldn't dent it hardly with a hammer. One of those old, and when she'd come, people would see her coming, and they'd actually pull off the side of the road and let her go right down the middle of the street because they knew who she was. People were scared of her, afraid of her. But there was something in my heart. I love that lady. I can't explain it. I loved her. I felt sorry for her. I pray for her. And then one day, I went out and flipped an old galvanized can upside down, and I climbed up on top of that can. And Miss Obi come out on the front porch across the way. And I hollered out to her, Miss Obi! And she turned around. I said, Jesus loves you. He wants to see you in heaven. And you can't do all the things that you're doing. You can't drink. And I called out this list. I don't remember what it is. And all those bad words you say. You can't do that anymore because you're going to go to hell. And I don't want to see you in hell. I did that a couple of times that I can remember. 
when I was up there and I was feeling what I was feeling, I didn't know that God was putting a dream in my heart. I didn't know that. He's putting something in there because he knew one day I'd be standing in front of a bunch of people and I would have that same love for those people and that dream would be to be a pastor, to tell people about Jesus, to preach to people. And above all that, I don't care if you don't call me pastor. I don't care if you call me pastor. I don't care what you call me. But this I want you to know, and I want you to feel this, is I'm first called to love you. That's my first calling. And I'll pray that God can help me to do that and show that in a greater way. But God, God put something in my heart. But at that time I was doing that, I didn't know that that was going to be part of my dream. See, I, I started out, I wanted to be a band director. That was my dream. I, I, I wanted to, to do different things. I wanted to be a, a veterinarian. That was my dream. And there were different things. And I, I wanted to be, uh, I forget, there was one other thing. But in high school, a guy named Willie Arrington came to our house. And he said, why don't you come to Gulf Coast Bible College just down to our vocational days? He says, man, he says, you're going to college next year? Just come. And so I thought, hey, that's cool. I'll just come look at it. I checked it out. I thought, well, this is a neat place. I'll go. I went. Little did I know there that God would deal with me and show me that I was called to the ministry. Didn't know that. You see, there's, there's, God has given us all a dream. Some of us just haven't found that dream yet. Don't know what that dream is. Some of us are all mixed up because we haven't had the revelation in our heart of our dream. And because of that, we can't find direction in our life. Because our purpose, our, our, direct, our, our, our direction, our dream gives us direction. Our dream gives us purpose. That's what our dream does. Our dream gives us a goal. Joseph. Joseph's often dream. Often your dream is helping you come what you need to be to fulfill your purpose. Joseph is a good example of that. When he was in the pit, God was helping Joseph to become what he was called to do. He was on the path. Joseph didn't realize that by being in that pit, someday he was going to be in Potiphar's house. Then the Pharaoh was going to, to give him certain things to do, and he was going to be over all of Egypt, rule over everything, call all the shots. He didn't know. But when he was in the pit, what God was doing with him, God was dealing with his heart. God was showing him things inside that needed to be cleaned out. He was showing him his hate and his anger and his bitterness at his, at his brothers. He was showing him different things like that that needed to get out. And he needed to have forgiveness, and he needed to have kindness, and he needed to have gentleness, and he needed to have love for all mankind, even those. See, he had to learn some things in the pit that he wouldn't have learned anything else, that when he got over here and he was doing this, that he knew how to do because God had already shown him in the pit. God used the palace. God used the palace. And the palace is where he faced temptation. He learned how to deal with temptation and how to flee. That was the place that he, he, he made a choice in his life. No, I'm not going to give my life to some things of this world that are not right. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to be a man of integrity. I'm going to be a man that, 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 the, that will please you, God. Not just please man, but will please you. That will stir heaven up. 
God used the prison to teach him about himself. He used the prison. He was thrown in prison. He used the prison because of the accusations that were put toward him. See, he was showing him about himself. See, do you ever find yourself that God shows you about yourself? You know what that is when God shows you about yourself things that, that, that are not like him? You know why he's doing that? Because he loves you. He loves you. Your parents, when you would get sick, they would take you to the doctor. Why do they take you to the doctor? Because they're, shoot, they won't kill me. Those doctors won't kill me. No, that's not why. Because your parents love you and they want healing for you. They want you to be well. The body. God wants your heart to be pure. Your heart to be holy. Your heart to be like his heart. Be sure your dream is a God-given dream and not just a desire or maybe a scheme. See, it's important that the dream that you follow is a God-given dream. Desires of the flesh often cause us to scheme our dream. And then sometimes we wonder, where am I? Number, the second thought here is, I want to tell you, first of all, is dream a dream. The second one is this, fight to keep your dream in sight. Fight. Anybody ever been in a fight? Raise your hand if you've been in a fight. Anybody ever been in a fist fight? Anybody ever been in a fight in here? I'd rather be in a fight here than I would in here. But I would rather be in a fight in here if it's going to help me win. If it's going to help me win. Joseph, I believe, never lost sight of the dream that God had given him. And even the pit, the palace, in the prison. He, 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 didn't, he didn't lose sight of it. It could be easy for, been easy for him to lose sight. He could have got discouraged. Why? Do you know how many years it took Joseph for that dream to be fulfilled? 22 years. 22 years before that dream came into fruition. Think about it. Maybe hurt. Hurt. Or maybe disappointment. Remember the baker? He, he, he gave, the baker, he, he told him what his dream meant. The baker says, I'll help you, I'll help you out. Then he went on out and didn't, he forgot about him. Maybe he was disappointed in people. Maybe people sometimes could, could hinder us. Fight to keep your dream alive in your heart. Don't let the enemy steal your God-given dream. The last thing is do a dream. You can talk about it. You can brag about it. You can say all kinds of things about it. But you have to do a dream. You have to do it. A lady in a church that I was at previously, her name was at that time was Anita Burrow, her mother and father were praying men, a praying man, a man and woman, powerful prayer warriors for God. And something got in the heart of their daughter, and God worked with their daughter, and she was given a gift. And the gift was to write poetry. And I want to read you one of her poems. It says, doing a dream. Doing a dream. Don't just dream a dream. Do it. What good is a dream unless you pursue it? God didn't give it to, it to watch it die before you even give it a try. You know, some of us, are, we, God's given us a dream and we see it and it's there, but we've never really just given it a good old try. Don't just dream a dream, move it. What good is talking unless you prove it? Did you think you'd get it without a fight? Or that it would all come 
overnight. Don't just wish a dream, believe it. What good is a wish unless you receive it? God didn't tell you to dream all day while the dream he gave you gets away. And that's true. Like Jay said, God just didn't give you this dream. There's a reason for that dream. There is. A song, I love music, a song that speaks to my heart every time I see it. it it's, an, it's a secular song. It was written for a movie. But the words to it, I don't see it that way. I see it as my relationship with God and my quest. My heart's, I see where I'm at in my heart and what I want to be even more so in my heart for God. And what, where we are in this dream thing. It says to dream the impossible dream. Sometimes your dream is going to seem impossible. If it's a God-given dream, there's no such thing as impossible. If you'll do your part, he'll take care of the rest. To dream the impossible dream. To fight the unbeatable foe. Sometimes you'll be up against things that feel like you're not going to win. Victories that, that you feel like that you're just, it's going to be a, a, a battle. You just feel like I'm going to be, this is going to defeat me. To bear the unbearable sorrow. There's going to be things in, in this walk with God to fulfill this dream, such as Joseph. Joseph, there was things in his life, he, I'm sure he felt like I just can't bear this pain I'm feeling inside. I can't bear this confinement against these bars, wondering if I'm ever going to get out. I can't bear this. To run where the brave dare not go. To right the unrightable wrong. To love pure and chaste from afar. To try till your arms are too weary. You ever just felt like, I don't have any, I'm just too weak. I don't have any spiritual strength. I've been there. Been there recently. I just, I don't think that. I don't think I can carry another burden. I don't think I can hear something else. I don't, I don't think I can pray a, another prayer because I just feel totally depleted. I don't have that in, within inside me. It's not there. To reach the unreachable star. This is my quest. To follow that star. Who's the star? Jesus. No matter how hopeless, no matter how far, to fight for the right without question or pause, to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. Wow. And I know, I know, I know this. There's times when the devil comes and he says, throw it all in. Give up. Don't do this. Do that. There's, you just can't handle this anyway. All the, man, I'm your pastor. I've heard all those things. I've, I've had to sing that song. I know where that's at. He says, and I know if I'll only be true. That, that's all it's going to take. If I'll endure to the end. If I'll only be true to this glorious quest that my heart will lie peaceful and calm when I'm laid to rest. When I close my eyes, I want to feel the peace of Jesus knowing that I followed through with my quest and I've done everything I know to do. I've not given up. I've not paused. I've not turned back because of my own self or anybody else. But I've pressed through. And the world will be better for this. And this could be you, that one man or one woman, scorned and covered with scars, still strove with their last ounce of courage to reach what seems to be the unreachable star. Does heaven sometimes seem like you just can't reach it? 
Does it feel like you just can't reach it? That's the enemy. Heaven is right close by, I believe. You can almost reach out and touch it in a, in, within yourself. And maybe sometimes we experience a little bit of heaven and we don't realize what it is. If your dream is a God-given dream and you strive with, all, with your last ounce of strength, your star is not unreachable because that is the place where God steps in. When you've done all that you can do and you've pressed through and God steps in and He says, okay, come on, I'm here to carry it for you. This morning, let's stand.